Remember, this show is available on both YouTube and Spotify. And before we begin, a word from our sponsor. This podcast is powered by the MIT TV of Romeo, Michigan. If you're looking to start a podcast for your business or personal use, look no further than the MIT TV. They can get you access to equipment, a production engineer, and even edit your podcast. That's all right here at the MIT TV of Romeo. And you can contact them right now via email at mitt.tvromeo at gmail.com. That's M-I-T-T dot TV at gmail.com. Well, welcome to the Romeo Sports Recap, uh, folks. And today we're going to feature the girls' varsity softball team. And I'm here with uh, head coach John Oley. And John, uh, you guys uh, having quite an interesting season this year. We are. You know, first of all, thanks for having us. I'm excited to be here. It's been an up and down season as far as the record goes, but uh, we're we're a combination of we have a couple youth and seniors. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're very senior heavy this year. Six seniors, um, six uh, juniors, with mm-hmm. two freshmen and one sophomore. So, oh, uh, two freshmen. Yes, they, uh, the way we roll is if they can contribute to uh, varsity and, and play, uh, we'd like to have them up on our squad. Mm-hmm. Um, if they're not going to see a lot of playing time, we keep the younger girls, even if they're a junior and won't see the field a lot, we ask them to play on JV just to stay in game game mode um, as opposed to coming up and sitting on the bench. Yeah, and they'll get some uh, at-bats, as they say, you know, and a chance to uh... – Get out there on the field, play a little bit. Yeah, and that, that's a good thing. How long have you been coaching uh, at Romeo, John? At Romeo, I started with the baseball program uh, 2012, a couple years with uh, TJ and, mm-hmm. and the boys' baseball. Um, and then my son became a junior and blew his arm out, so I kind of transitioned. My daughter started at, she was a freshman. And so I was, I've been with softball ever since. So, so what year do you think what that was? Was 2004? 14. 14. 2014, 2014. with the softball program, yes. And uh, I started with JV. I took over the JV squad. And then when she, um, my daughter was called up for districts at, at a freshman year. And that following year, I, I joined Dave McIntyre and Doug Notch, Mike Weaver. Doug Notch, yes. On the, on the Coached yeah. at Eisenhower and played pro ball, didn't he? He did. He played uh, uh, L.A. Dodgers. Yeah, and uh, was, I think he's in the Hall of Fame at Central Michigan as well. Yeah, standout college yes. pitcher. Yeah, he yeah. was a good uh, he was a good guy to talk to. I remember talking to him about baseball. You know, I, I was the bench coach with them, and I would sit on the bucket and watch him call pitches, and it was just I learned so much about the game of baseball yeah. that I thought I knew that. Just yeah. a great great guy, great guy to be with. And well, you yourself on this mm-hmm. year's squad. I mean, it's a big job to be the head coach, but but you have some supporting cast. Well, who who supports you on this, and who helps you out uh, coaching this team? Uh, we got uh, Brian Brass. Uh, Brian, we've been together since uh, I took over, uh, and then uh, Matt Chris, who was an old ex Eisenhower guy, but I've known Matt uh, for many years through the uh, the. Uh, travel softball Just circuit, the, yeah. right? Coaching and coach my daughters. Uh, Ron LeBlanc uh, helps as well, and Ron's also the varsity uh, basketball coach over at Romeo. So he he's the only teacher on the uh, on the squad. Oh, okay. Right, so we all make our living outside of uh, the school district. So it helps having a teacher where the girls can go to during class. I was just going to say, yeah, I was just going to say that probably helps a little bit. Uh, that there's a connection with the school and absolutely, and, uh, so that I mean that's good. I mean, so so this year you said it's been kind of an up and down year, but there's got to be a couple of things that uh, stand out in your mind uh, that make it special to this year. That are yeah, the, the, the players every year, right? And uh, one lady you we'll, we'll talk to later, Reese Fountain. I've known her since she was born. I uh, we've known I've known the family. What you're a doctor? And, what? No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, but just knowing her parents and uh, through through the schools and my my wife and her her mom work together, and but it's kind of like having a daughter. And she was our eighth grade student manager for varsity, and now that she's a senior, it's just uh, it's been a joy to watch the girls when they come in the program how they mature. Um, talk talk a little bit about the maturity or, or well. The team as a whole, the mm-hmm. character of the team. I mean, 
how would you describe it? What what kind of uh, ways would you uh, explain it to somebody that the character, the whole team, because the team is a whole, right? You know, so it, w- what kind of character does this team sort of trend to? Fun loving uh, leaders. They this is the uh, well, that's good because I was fun loving, but I wasn't a leader. <laughs> Me too, right? Uh, I had a lot of fun. Um, I. The cumulative G point, uh, GPA for this group is 3.8. Oh, man, I'm almost smarter than right. you. Uh, um, <laughs> we have one player that she's graduating seventh in, her cl- in the class. Oh, um, wow. And what's important to us as a coaching staff, it, you know, wins and losses are great. But it's the, the character that we're, we're helping them build, the life lessons we're teaching. Well, the yeah, you know, yeah. early is on time, on time is late type mentality. Stuff that they're going to carry with them, hopefully. You had a know. community event today, too, that you, the team participated in. What was that all about? Uh, you know, awesome, you know, 100% participation, which is great. Uh, we, every year for the last 10 years, started with Dave McIntyre and Doug Notch. Uh, we have a strikeout cancer type tournament where we raise funds and donate that money to a cause. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year, we weren't able to have that, that. That tournament was rained out, so we chose a community service project mm. through uh, a local company here, Interim Healthcare. Yeah, it's okay to say. And <laughs> we, uh, I called them up and said, we, we're looking, we, I have 20 athletes that we need something to do. We want to give back to our community. And, and we, they chose four, four families for us to pull weeds, move trees. Uh, oh, we wow. trim bushes today. Wow. We painted a garage, in, you know, ceiling of a garage. and well, That had have been fun. They all said they had a blast. So, uh, you know, we, we, we talked to them in a little bit. We'll see. Yeah, uh, we'll they, see how they really feel about it. You know, it, was, <laughs> it was a very heartfelt day. Um, the, the elderly people that we helped were very appreciative, uh, some tears. Yeah. Uh, you know, just it, you make a difference. And, and that's important. Right. That, it, is, it, important. that is important. And, you know, softball's a game. And it's bigger than softball. Yeah, it's, it's the real life lessons here yeah. that are, are being done, which is great. Uh, as this team uh, stacks up to your team against uh, of the past, rather, mm-hmm. um, how do you compare them with your your past squads? They're very this this squad is very competitive, and we'll do you know, coachable is the right word mm-hmm. um, that we'll do anything that takes to win with you know within the rules to you know, at least make that effort, and we haven't always had that. You know, coming in, I was I was very spoiled when I when I joined Dave's staff. Uh, we went to two Final Fours. You know, we had Taylor Weaver, Gatorade Player of the Year, um, on that on that team. Uh, Eleven players went on to play college softball. Wow! So very talented. Um, this group, not all of them are going on to play college softball. They can. They're just choosing not to, which is a life decision, right? Um, but they work hard, and at the end of the day, there's some tough discussions. You know, when you hold somebody accountable, it's not easy to deliver the message, but it's it's equally uneasy to receive that message. Um, they're mature; they receive that message, and we, we go from there. Yeah, yeah that's it's good when they. Um, well, I can only speak for myself. I mean, we got messages, but we yep. never got the messages. <laughs> you know, never clicked in my, okay. which is probably why in my senior year our varsity basketball team was two and 26 so <laughs> message wasn't getting through talent wasn't there you know right i mean we were uh short but we were slow you know yeah it's kind of a bad combination it's a bad combination for uh for a, and a disaster for a, a basketball season varsity basketball uh, let's talk about your season yeah this year you started off again four straight wins against a couple of rival teams and and an oakland county team Yes. Um, thoughts after the four wins? What were you thinking? Were you kind of the the girls? Were they did they um, uh, have a air of confidence about them? And I, I, yes, but wasn't overconfident, and I think it was we were reserved because of the, the competition we were playing. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, rivals and you know, some Oakland County teams, but felt that we we should have beat them. You should have been. Yeah, yeah. You okay, know. okay. And, and I, don't, I don't want to sound arrogant, but just from the talent, you know, every year, high school, we can't recruit for 
uh, positions, right? Yeah. We get what we get. Yeah. Um, Romeo is one of the smaller Division One schools in the state, mm-hmm. whereas Dakota is the largest. Yes, it is. Right. Yeah. So, so uh, that was good. But then you had two straight losses to Richmond. Yes. Um, and one was kind of close. Uh, kind of what, what happened on in those two contests? Uh, we play Richmond every year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we love all play the best competition, right? Get ready for districts and beyond, right? Um, that Richmond's the defending D two state champ, nice squad. We just we didn't hit, you know. It came down to no, yeah. we were competitive. A uh, couple you know mistakes in the field, we just we couldn't recover from. And yeah, I mean you didn't get blown out no. in those two games. Nope, but uh, you, you could have probably used some better hitting. <laughs> Yeah, then then you had a loss to Gross Point North, who's pretty good softball school, I guess, and they're a great baseball school too. Yep. yep. Uh, and then you ripped off three wins in a row uh, against Henry Ford and Anchor Bay. Um, coming off those losses of uh, Richmond, and then winning those three in a row, did you feel like okay, we're back in the saddle again? Yeah, definitely, especially Anchor Bay, great squad, good historic program. Uh, in the Mac Red, yeah, right, and we always figure the teams to beat. Excuse me, uh, the teams to beat are um, Anchor Bay, Dakota, and then Gross Point North. Mm-hmm. But they've had our number the last couple of years. Yeah, I, Ron, they run. A, he runs a great program over there. And one thing about the Mac Red, which is kind of I believe unique, is all the coaches are we get along. I mean, they're great people. Yeah, and uh, but that's can't can't beat Ron. I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> Well, they put something in his coffee or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you were followed, you know, with a couple of straight losses, Lance Cruz North, and, of course, you mentioned about Dakota, a powerful mm-hmm. squad. Uh, what was the feeling after those two losses? I mean, what did the team kind of mood was on the team? You know, the, that's the one good thing about this. We'll have our, our post game of this team, uh, the post game uh, talk, you know, disappointed, you know, sad faces. Mm-hmm. Um, but we bounce back. You know, that's, you know, I always tell them it's how many times we get knocked down, it's how many times we get back up, right? Yeah. We're going to lose. You're going to lose. You're going to have bad days in life. Yes, that's right? true. That's true. So get back up and let's go. Well, uh, the Lance Cruz North, we, you know, uh, frankly, we shouldn't have lost that one. Uh, we let some things get away from us. So we had a big lead, let that disappear, and then we lost it in extra innings. Cool. Um, and the girls, you know, took their foot off the throat. A little bit. Yeah. And a little bit was, you know, coaching. Yeah. You know. Um, Taylor, young lady that coached over Lance Cruz North, uh, in the Hall of Fame at U of M Dearborn softball. So, a great coach. Yeah. And she took advantage of some of our, our miscues, you know, scoring from second base on a ball that was hit the shortstop type deal. Wow. So it was it was it was a combination of coaches and players and, but after that game, you know, kind of looked at them and I asked every one of them, should we have lost that game? And everybody's like, no. So. Uh, oh, you, you guys rally back, you. You got three straight wins, including a big one over uh, Eisenhower. I mean, a drubbing of Eisenhower, mm-hmm. and uh, so sort of again, back in the saddle. Absolutely, and that, that's been the, uh, uh, the the kind of the theme: win three, four, or lose a couple. Yeah, all season. Uh, we beat Allen Park in a tournament in Grand Blanc a couple weeks ago, and Allen Park uh, was a state runner-up last year, and ranked third in, in the state this year, going into districts. So. Good, good squad down there, and we beat them. And, and you then had a tight loss to Gross Point North. I almost beat them a two to one loss to at them. home, right? And then uh, the the Pier East, you won that one. We did. And uh, Marysville eight seven, so back again. There's your up and down, and you're winning again. And and then a uh, tough loss to Algonac yes. in the tournament. That uh, you know we, we were probably hoping that, that we were done with the roller coaster ride, but it, it didn't materialize and um and i a game that i was at uh, on the 16th you beat henry ford the second yes uh in a nice come from behind win um i believe uh, it was uh, miss ganfield that hit the home run that kind of reminded me a little bit of it's how old i am sure. reminded me of the 68 tigers came from behind hung in there came from behind with a big hit or big home run and uh, that had to have been a big lift for the squad. It was. It was. It was. We call her Abigail. 
Uh, Abigail, uh, hit, that was her first home run on the varsity uh, level. You know, as she'll say, first over the fence home run. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was huge. Uh, you know, well, our players are my captain. Reese said it during the game. There's the vibe is off. Yeah. It's kind of like we were just going through the motions and no energy and and th- we found a way to to pull it off in the end. Now you went and played a couple of teams a little bit east and north of here, uh, Croswell, Lexington, and uh, was it Marine City? Right. It's the end of the earth, I think, isn't it? Uh, just keep driving on 26 miles. Keep going you, right there. Until you can't go no more. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and you'll find them. And that, that it, it's satisfying to beat uh, those teams, too. It is. It, you know, because we don't play them a lot. We don't, we don't see them a lot. Um, and we, we went to the Skippers uh, tournament. Uh, St. Clair Community College had a tournament this past weekend. That, yeah, you, that we you played, played Marysville, right? We played Marysville, uh, Marine City, uh, North Branch, mm-hmm. and uh, Cross Lakes. How did we? Uh, how did you fare against Marysville? Then? Marysville, we beat them uh, in at, in Algonac. Yep. And then we lost to them yesterday in Saint Clair. Uh, oh. um, tough loss, uh, close. But, you know, it, it, no, uh, it was I think it ended up being like nine to six, something like that. But we we hit three home runs. They hit two. Just kind of back and forth. We gave them a couple extra chances that they took advantage of. But. Um, right there, you know, yeah. getting us ready for districts. Okay, good. You know. uh, th- th- that that was a sort of a prep thing because you got this week coming up. I think on the twenty fifth, you got Dakota, uh, and then you play Stevenson, and then Marine City again, mm-hmm. uh, and I think you end up with Lutheran North, and then yes. district the tournament. Correct. Yeah. So, how do you how are you prepping the team for this week? Uh, is it is it just looking forward to the tournament and doing things, tightening things up, or how, how do they, how do you get ready for so they'll peak? Absolutely, uh, great question, and th- this is the time to do that. Uh, so we've scheduled uh, a doubleheader against Lake Orion tomorrow. Um, our district shapes up. We have Rochester High School, Stony Creek High School, and uh, Eisenhower High School mm. in our in our district. Uh, we play Saturday, I think June third or. Fourth June uh, uh, at 10 a.m. Stony Creek and Rochester play at noon, and then the winners of each play at two. Where's that going to be at? So it's folks. it's at our field. It's oh, at Ralph Whitker Field. Well, good. I so hope we, we can get the hot dog concession stand uh, ready. Make uh, a little money. Make a little bit, right? <laughs> at least, or at least feed the coaches. So. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, but we scheduled tough teams. You know, we have a, we had a zero zero tie on Saturday. It was a time tournament, so you know, kind of drop dead or finish the inning and. Mm-hmm. No, no, no extra innings with uh, North Branch. Uh, their senior pitchers going to Madonna next year. Had a spin curve, you know, just moved the ball all over. We did well. We hit, we had a couple hits, but could never get somebody past second base. But you know, told the girls after that game, this is preparing us for districts. Yes. Sir. Right. So we tried to do some bunting, and we, we, yeah, I so said we're play, let's play for one run. So it's it's those type of games now. Because you, know, you never know the tournament that could be. Absolutely. One run that wins it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, Lake Orion is very similar to Stony Creek, which we haven't played this year. So we gonna want to see them tomorrow, see how we fare, see what we can do, and get us ready for that Saturday. Well, that'll be exciting because uh, it sounds like you've got a plan to peak, and that's what has to happen in the tournament. I, Once it's tournament time, records are out the window. It's like playoffs any, in pro sports. And, yeah. Records are, I mean, look at Florida, you know, and the hockey playoffs, you know, that weren't supposed to really be there, you know, but. Uh, we had the Mac Red uh, title in our sights, uh, but when we lost to Anchor Bay, that kind of, this last week, uh, kind of shot that. So we've just turned it, you know, all right, one goal we couldn't achieve, no, we can still win districts. So. You still got the uh, the tournament, though. That's Absolute, the important thing. Yeah, absolutely. That, that could be a bigger prize. Yep. Um, want to talk about the players mm-hmm. but here's what I want to do I want to name the player and I want you just sort of just react and give me a couple of sentences about them and their value to the team and uh you know what's it like coaching them and so just like if you were a scout yes <laughs> you know you could give me a, a little um a scouting report on them in brief okay Sound good? Okay, let's start with uh, Reese Fountain. Reese Fountain, uh, senior captain. Great personality. 
great leader and power hitter this year. I know she's in the room, but uh, mm-hmm. she, I think she's, I, if my, my memory serves me correctly, the first five games she had a home run. And, but just now stroking the ball and when we can keep her going to the right side, we yeah. call it hitting the bulldog sign because our yeah. new fence in the back, it says bulldogs. Yeah. Um, and she's line driving all over the park. Jackie LeBlanc. Jackie LeBlanc, Jr. Uh, com- uh, verbally committed to go to uh, Lawrence Tech. Sorry, Jackie's here as well, but um, quiet leader. Very hard on herself, but leads with, demonstrates and, and goes example. through it. And example, exactly. By example, how about Megan Myers? Megan Myers is our freshman. Uh, she's a, a switch hitter that we've said, you're just going to be left-handed, uh, hit left. Yeah. Uh, speed like I've never seen. Great young player, good future ahead of her. How about Aubrey Rich? Aubrey Rich, she has blossomed this year. She was kind of came to us kind of shy, you know, uh, but this year she's cracking jokes. She's hitting the ball really well. Uh, she's going to be a corner outfielder in college. Okay, how about uh, Haley uh, Sizlik? Shadlick. Haley uh, is a senior, and I've, Haley's been on varsity for two two years. Beautiful young lady. She's not getting about as much time as she'd like, uh, but play, knows her role, plays it well, um, and is so supportive of the team. I kind of want to say she's like the team mom. Everybody kind of mm-hmm. gravitates to her. She's got a great personality, you know, from my point of view. Mm-hmm. How about uh, S- Sydney Wilson? Sydney Wilson is a senior. She's going to play next year at OCC, Oakland Community College. Uh, kind of, she's in the. The, our second catcher so in the depth chart, not getting a lot of time this year. Strong as an ox. Yeah. And it, when she puts it together, that, that ball's not going to land for a long time. <laughs> uh, how about Ella Walker? Ella Walker. Uh, she is a, another captain this year, senior. She's going to continue her career at Alma College. Just She's our number one pitcher. And... Call it Cool Hand Luke. They don't know who that is, but mm-hmm. just calm, just gets the job done. Mm-hmm. Home run, oh well, goes back and just, just give me the ball. Let's yeah. get it done. No, that, that's good. Uh, Emily Dawson. Emily Dawson is a, is a utility player for this year. She's a junior. Uh, she's on fire. She's last couple games been in the starting lineup and hitting the ball all over the place. Very athletic. How about Elena? Nikolovsky. Nikolovsky. She is a, a, just a pure joy. Great young lady. She's seventh, graduating seventh in the class. Um, does not have a, she's not going to play college softball, but mm-hmm. uh, big things with her. She feels a role, a role player for us mm-hmm. and is our, uh, our bullpen catcher mm-hmm. type uh, leader on the bench. Yeah, everybody's got a role, that's for sure, especially in a, a team. Absolutely, and, and that's the toughest thing is, you know, you come from all these organizations and travel and you know, we have some players that, hey, I don't want to pitch or I, I don't play this position, but we need you to here at Romeo, mm-hmm. and, but everybody has a role to play. And How about uh, Abby Ganfield? Abby, I'm still trying to figure her out. She is just so even keeled. Um, her, her grandfather is a legend in Romeo, Derek. Is her father, but uh, Mr. Ganfield, senior, old coach, here. old coach, absolutely. From, uh, Romeo. You know, so yeah, long right. legacy of uh, yeah. you know Ganfield's in the Romeo area. Yeah, uh, great. She's our starting catcher, and I see her playing. Well, she hit a home run when I was there, and I thought, wow. And I didn't expect it, but she cranked it pretty good. And the wind was kind of blowing in a little bit. I don't know if it stopped at that time or what happened. But I'd like to say all the all our Romeo girls are country strong. They just, <laughs> yeah. they, you know, um, and we, we embrace that. It's a, a community. But to, just to her personality, you know, gave her the home run ball. I said, this is your first varsity home run. <laughs> She's like, well, over the fence. You know, kind of like, yeah, I've hit him before, but. <laughs> <laughs> Had a run for him. Uh, Elizabeth Pugh. Elizabeth Pugh is a junior. She, I don't think she knows how good she is. And if she does, she doesn't show it. But we can put that kid anywhere on the diamond, and she just gets the job done. And Hannah Richardson. Hannah's a senior. She's going, I always want to say Goshen. It's not Goshen, but she's going on to play D2 college softball. Mm-hmm. Uh, first base catcher. Great, 
young lady, drives the ball. She's tall. She, you know, she's got like a volleyball body. Uh, yeah. When she she's kind of struggling a little bit this you know right now, but it, I think up and coming or coming up or something. Uh, the girls will tell you what this statement we're using. <laughs> she's trending, and so when we hit districts, we're, she's going to be rocking. Oh, so that's good. That's one player that be peaking for sure. Yep, and she's she's also a captain. Okay, how about Anna uh, Iwaniki? Anna is just the pure joy, ball of energy, ball of energy, a junior. Uh, she hit her first home run this past weekend as well. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, her parents weren't there. They had some other obligations, and she goes, they're not going to believe me. So <laughs> thankfully, we had it on Game Changer tape or videotape, yeah. so, and she got the ball. But Oh, excellent. Great. And Emily Reynolds. Em is a great, great young lady. And I think I when you asked me about Emily Dawson, didn't you, before? Yeah, I think I confused the Emilys. So Emily Dawson is our, our our sophomore pitcher. Great history. Emily Reynolds is our. She's been stroking the ball as of late, hitting the starting lineup. Uh, but Emily Dawson this past weekend hit a grand slam. Yeah. So the you know we, I we think keep. I, I hit a grand slam one time in yard ball. Yeah, but well, it was a plastic ball taped up and. I, I I told her we keep we keep our Romeo records and, uh, downhill from there. I peaked. Yeah, you know, you don't I, want to peak in high school. I peaked as a nine year old, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was it. So Emily Reynolds, yes, is stroking a ball well. Yep. How about Sarah uh, Jesperson? Sarah's a fr- our freshman. Um, you know, you don't know what you're going to get with a freshman, and I'm pleasantly surprised. I I project her playing high-level college ball. She's very athletic. Um, I thought she was shy at first. I I was totally wrong on that. She's very (laughs) outgoing. I think the girls love her. And uh, she is a very good pitcher, but prefers outfield. But she's hitting hitting the ball. And our rule is if you're hitting, we got to find a place for you. Well, that is, uh, yeah, you can't keep a hitter out of the lineup. That's for sure. Not at all. Well, Coach, I uh, uh, wish you the best of luck. We'll get out there. I'm going to get out there anyway and watch you guys a couple more times before uh, the tournament. Um, hopefully, uh, you'll bring in bag some more victories and uh, get a good head of steam going into the tournament. Well, Thank- I appreciate it. Thank you for the time. Thanks you for joining us here in the Romeo Sports Recap. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. I am joined today with two juniors on the girls' varsity softball team. I've got Liz Pugh and Jackie LeBlanc. Thank you guys for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Alrighty, so if we're to start with your off-season work, I we talked about this a little bit before. You both play for some outside clubs during the off-season, correct? Yeah. Correct. Do you want me to tell tell me a little bit about those? Yeah, sure. So, um, I originally started on edge fast pitch, but then our organization was well, not our whole organization, but a couple of us were starting to fall off, and we were having trouble getting like pitchers. So we moved to a different travel team and we went to fire sticks but our team majority stayed together um and so over the summer we'll have a few tournaments and just to like stay in softball and stay ready for the school season and then also for school once um our season starts to come up like around in the winter we'll have um what do you call like workouts that we'll do with each other rotations and just to like get back into the school season and kind of with our coaches and back with each other. Do you play for the same program? You play for a different program? I play for the Michigan Chargers now. I used to play for the Romeo Renegades, but then I also transferred due to some to some players. And yep, it's been a great season so far and love playing with them. And then we go into winter and do our rotations with four other girls. Do you guys ever face each other? When you're on your opposing teams, have yeah. you guys played against each other? Is mm-hmm. it awkward? <laughs> um, it's I wouldn't say it was it's awkward. It's fun seeing each other, and yeah. there's a lot of other people on our um, high school team that we'll see as well. And it's kind of just a fun little reunion yeah. over the summer to see <laughs> each other. And you get other. to kind of like scout the competition, right? Because you're yeah. going to see girls that you'll face during the regular season for Romeo from different schools. So that's right. kinda, that's got to be helpful too, right? Yeah. You kind of yeah. know what you should be expecting a little bit. So get into your Romeo season this year. You guys started 4 and 0. So that's that's a pretty good start. What parts of the team were clicking during that time? Um I think what helped us is that we're a mainly like senior and junior team. So we've been together for a while and we've already had that like special bond yeah. and to understand how each other play 
and like kind of our mindset and how to get people out like if they're in a slump or like if they're upset and so that definitely helped us like stay up and beat some other teams definitely same <laughs> yeah like at the beginning we really hit the ball yeah so that really helped us yeah and i like how you say about the because you do have majority junior what you've got one sophomore and two freshmen right yes. so you're all pretty familiar with each other already so that had to help this year for sure right yeah. so in that beginning season you had a big win against the school's biggest rival for the most part i would say eisenhower and you guys mercyed them Yes. That's pretty awesome. That had to feel good, right? Especially yeah, yeah. in the beginning of the season. You get some confidence from that one, right? Yeah. It was definitely a good start to the season to boost our confidence and get us ready for the other tough games. How early on was that one? Was that in one of the first four that you won? I I think, think so. It, yeah. Maybe. That, that's a pretty exciting start to the season. So then from there, you guys have kind of been up and down with the wins and the losses. It brings you to 14-10-1 on the season, which yes. is, that's a good record. So what what happened during that time in your waves there? How did you guys like re find your momentum as a team? Um, so I think in our losses we were having trouble hitting, and obviously you're not gonna win if you can't score. Right. And so we um, in practices we've been working on hitting to make sure that we're still on and that we can hit the ball. And so it, when we do lose a game, we all as a team we stay together and we try not to get down on each other. Um, and so we help pick each other up to be ready for the next game. And because once again, once you lost, like yeah. you can't go back to games in the past, right. and you just have to keep moving forward to the next game. Like Jackie said, we really like when we lose. It's usually because we don't hit the ball so much, and maybe a few errors in the field, but it's mostly because we don't hit. But coming off that, when we practice hitting, we come back stronger, and then we hit the ball, and then we win. So yeah, it, just an up and down as we go. Yeah, but you find a way. You guys find a way to win. That's so important. So we'll get into both of you individually, what your role is on the team. So Liz, we'll start with you. If you just want to tell me what your role is on the team, how you started playing that role, if this is what you've always done. Yep. So I started as a freshman on the team, kind of thinking that I was like, kind of just going to sit the bench, you know, full freshman. Yeah. And then I started at second base and then I was like towards the top of the lineup, which is a little scary. Yeah. Like I played there for my travel team, but it's a whole new team. I'm playing with girls that are like 18 and I'm yeah. like 15. <laughs> a little, so, little nerve wracking. Yeah. So that was fun. And then come my sophomore season, I transferred over to third midway through the season. And this year I started at second again, then got moved over to third. So kind of just all over wherever I need to be. Yeah. Is that the position you play on your travel team over the summer too? I actually play shortstop for my travel. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, just an infielder. Utility. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yep. And we'll move to you, Jackie. You want the same thing? Yeah, so also freshman year I made varsity squad. I started in center field and also higher in the um, batting lineup. And I've stayed center field um, majority of the seasons. But this year we moved, I moved up to second. So now going from outfield to infield, that's a little different look. Yeah. Um, and uh, I started a little lower in the lineup this year I was having trouble in the beginning I was struggling a little bit mm -hmm. but then I kind of found my place got more confidence and I started to move my way back up the lineup oh, nice. and same you play the different positions on your travel um, you on, my, on my travel team I'm outfield okay so. you, see, you guys just play it all you guys mm -hmm. just get a little little taste of everything right yeah yep. so you have senior ta senior captains but you're both juniors so you said you have leadership council yes. and you're on the leadership council Jackie so can yes. you explain to me what that is so we have two juniors on the leadership council and that's kind of if the underclassmen if they are not as comfortable going to the captains okay. and talking to them they can come to us and we'll talk to either the captains or the coaches with any problems that arrive oh, that's nice that's a fun you don't hear of that too often with the high school sports having a leadership council but that's that's fun that makes that's a good way to bond with the team right yeah so looking at your season, it doesn't have to be this season. It could just be your time since you said you've both been on varsity since freshman or year. So what's a specific match or game that stood out to you? Um, for me, I would say Dakota this year and last year. Um, we lost both game, both times, mm -hmm. but um, each year I somehow hit a home run Hi. off of uh, their pitcher, Megan Nectarline. And she's, I believe, is going D1. So Ooh, it's really, you're that's like, really exciting. No big deal. It's just yeah. whatever. 
used and then mine would probably be beating anchor bay like we've always been kind of like there with them and we've lost in the past few years but beating them really kind of like gave us a little boost and a little confidence for our districts and getting that and then we also beat allen park a few weekends ago which were defending state champs so that was nice I love how you guys picked the, the big time team. It sounds fun. You're like, no big deal. We just beat the defending state champs. It's, <laughs> it's whatever. But I see a lot of your Instagram posts as yes. a team. That's pretty fun. It looks like you guys get along great. So yeah. can you talk to me about the team camaraderie? Yeah. So um, even just last night, I believe it was, yesterday we had um, a few game tournament. And after that, we still had some time left in the day and we decided to go to one of our teammates' house and yeah. do a little spike ball tournament because um, we like to play spike ball. Yeah. Like, in between our games, we'll play spike ball. And so I love we that. went Bring to it with our, you. <laughs> yeah. And so we went to one of our teammates' house last night and played more spike ball. So nice. that was a fun bonding time. Yeah. That's great. I love the Instagrams. Who else? Soccer has a really funny Instagram, too. Yeah. I just – I love when you guys post it. It's just – it's hilarious to see. But – you're going into the last portion of your season right now. So what as a team are you looking to improve on? Definitely just like hitting the ball. When we hit, we really stay up there. Mm-hmm. We really compete with the other team. So as long as we hit, we'll do good. Yeah. Just got to stay confident at the plate. Yep. Yeah. Like she said, so like when we hit well, when we have when we do good batting, that brings confidence with us into the field because we know that we have that little bit of cushion when we're up a few runs so that it like – helps us calm our nerves in the field so we're not as pressured awesome and with districts coming up in a couple of weeks are you guys feeling excited nervous i know your coach talked about who you're going to be facing so how are you guys feeling um i'm a little excited about it we have we'll have ike are Mm -hmm. in the semifinals, and we beat them twice so far this year yeah so hopefully we can come out with another one again like i don't we don't want to be too cocky going right like going up to play them and like play down to their level we still want to play up and play our game. Liz, how are you feeling? I'm feeling excited. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Yeah. Get to play Ike, so should hopefully win, but knock on wood. <laughs> and yeah, and then we'll either place or play Stony Creek or Rochester, I believe, and hopefully come out on top. Perfect. And then you're both juniors, as we touched on. So next year is going to be your senior season, your final year. What are you guys looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to more of like bonding with each other and getting that like more games in high school season before going to college yeah and kind of just that one last run yeah right yeah like she said that one last run is really fun to have like Mm -hmm. knowing but then it's also like you're leaving behind a lot of your life like high school has been four years been on varsity all four years so it'll be sad leaving once that comes yeah but so you both have a little bit of time to think about it so but do you know your plans after high school yet maybe some colleges you're considering want to share that yeah um I'm planning on going to Lawrence Tech I've already talked to their coach um and so I have a place there and I just still it I can't apply to Lawrence Tech Mm -hmm. and I have to wait until the summer but I've already talked to the coach and we've talked about it so nice congratulations thank you Liz I have no idea what that I'm doing. That is totally right fine. Yeah. <laughs> You've got time. Yeah. You've got so much time. Mm-hmm. I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining me. Again, thank you, Liz Pugh and Jackie LeBlanc. Thank you for having thank us. You. Before we continue here on the Romeo Sports Recap Show, a word from our sponsors. This podcast is powered by the MIT TV of Romeo, Michigan. If you're looking to start a podcast for your business or personal use, Look no further than the MIT TV. They can get you access to equipment, a production engineer, and even edit your podcast. That's all right here at the MIT TV of Romeo. And you can contact them right now via email at mitt.tvromeo at gmail.com. That's M-I-T-T dot TV at gmail.com. Now, back to the show. We have visiting with us here um, a senior from the Romeo girls varsity softball team and Reese Fountain. Welcome to the Romeo Sports Recap. Thank you for having me. Um, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, how you got involved in softball, what made you excited about it, and what makes you keep going. 
So I started softball with the Romeo Recreation League when I was about four or five years old. I played t-ball, and from t-ball I went into kind of... I couldn't of, hit in that league either, so... <laughs> <laughs> I went into rec softball, and I really liked the sport because um, I watched... I grew up watching my dad play in a men's league, and we would always go to his games on Sundays. Was he pretty good? He was pretty good, I won't lie. Okay. So it kind of pushed me to start. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So what age was that? About four to five I started. Okay, that would have been in the T-ball league or whatever. And then um, what position did you kind of start out at? And what position are you playing now? So I kind of started out in the infield at second and shortstop. I bounced between, but I'm now playing center. Center field, what, but it's got to be quite a transition from the infield to the outfield. I mean, uh, what was it like going out there the first time? It was a little nerve-wracking, but I think that my talents and what I can bring to the team does a, the team a lot more success, and my mm-hmm. skill set is better in the outfield. Okay. Um, obviously, you had some influencers, and there were people that helped you along the way. Talk about the people that that helped you and what they did for you. And, you know, uh, maybe not just parents because they had you, but but maybe there's some coaches or some other players. So, obviously, the first person I would definitely say is my dad. That's I feel like that's inevitable to say because he's my dad. But he's definitely my number one supporter and motivates me every day to keep going and get better. And he has definitely taken all the time and effort with me in any sport and to always keep pushing on. So I would say 100% my dad. But I think my coach in my year of 14U definitely took my game to another level. I played on a 16U team, so I played up. And she was probably the hardest coach I've ever had and also the first female coach I've ever had. So it was definitely a game changer going from having a guy coach to a girl coach. As what much is as, the difference? The biggest as much difference. as it sounds weird, it's just it's just like a different bond you have. Uh-huh. And it's almost like you can't even get mad. Like you just connect on a different level. So having her as a coach and definitely having her being super hard on me push me as a player to strive for the next level and to like have the want to keep getting better and and practice and practice and practice and keep going yeah. yes definitely uh this year's team um you're the senior on it um you heard coach earlier talk about a bit of an up and down season mm-hmm. but uh you're competitive in every game what do you what do you feel the character is of this team I definitely think first I would say fun loving because I feel like every time I step onto the field I'm stepping onto the field with my family. These girls are my sisters and most of them I've been with for two to three years. Definitely Hannah, we've been on varsity since our freshman year, but we unfortunately got our season canceled due to COVID. Yeah. But I mean these girls are my sisters. We have put blood, sweat and tears onto the field. And I definitely think it's fun-loving, but there's also a really good balance of determination and drive, too. Um, Who do you like hanging out with the best? Honestly, everyone, but for some reason, I always find myself getting the closest with the freshmen every year. Last year, I was super close with the freshmen, and this year, I'm close with them, too. I think I just like the newbies. I like to get them introduced to the team and get everything going. Well... Uh, would it be fair to say that that you are the team slugger uh-huh. w- with all your home runs there in the beginning, boy? I definitely started off hot, but there's some really good talent on our team, and they're catching up to me. Uh oh, uh oh. But what when you go to to bat? Here you are. You're you're coming up to the plate, and uh, how do you approach it? How do you what, what's going through your mind? So right now, I would definitely say I'm coming out of a slump (laughs) because I started the season off really hot. But I think when I go up to bat, this sounds crazy, but my mentality is to always 
I just want to beat them. Like, that's just my mentality. If I, anyone I'm going against, I just want to beat you. And then they throw a change up at you. you know? Yep. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Uh, you know, what do you, uh, what do you think this team can do? I think this team can do many things because we, I honestly think you can be anyone on any given day. So I think if we can put all of our efforts and strengths in the right places, we can do all great things. Do you feel like the team has a good opportunity to peak now before the tournament? I definitely do. I think we've always had it the whole season. It's just how we go into games and what our mindset is. And I think if we end up in the right place, it, we will always succeed. So let's put softball aside. What does Reese Fountain like to do besides softball? What are some of your interests and some of the things that you do uh, when you're not playing softball? I'm really close with my family, so I'm always with my family. I love hanging out with my friends. I also play volleyball, so that's a big thing for me. And especially with senior year, I'm soaking up all the time I can with my friends from high school because we'll all be separating this coming summer. Do you go to watch the other sports at all? Yeah. yeah. A lot of my friends are athletes and play sports, so it's really fun when like they cross divide and you yeah. can go watch them compete too. Well, hopefully they have a better football team this year. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, they had a good football team this year, but uh, what does the future hold for you? What's going to happen to Reese Fountain when she graduates Romeo High School? I will be attending Michigan State. And I am going to major in human biology. And the end all be all plan is to become a physician's assistant and specialize in dermatology. Wow. I, and I got letters, you know, for me to go to college, but they all said, don't even think about it. So, oh. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you're okay. way ahead of me. <laughs> well, we wish you a lot of luck uh, Thank you. the rest of this year and in the future and up at Michigan State. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by the Romeo Thank Sports Recap. Thank you so recap. much for having me. Well, folks, we'd like to recap uh, what's been going on in Romeo High School sports. Uh, Madison Janabet and myself uh, will kind of review what has been happening since our last podcast. So what's yeah. going on, Madison? Lots of, lots of sports action going on. We'll start off with varsity baseball. Their most recent game was Saturday against Detroit UAD Jesuit, where the Bulldogs won 8-2. to two. That brought their overall record to 11, 11, and 1. Ah, well, well, hopefully they can peak just like the, the softball team. Yeah. Peak for the tournament coming up. And they've got an exciting next matchup tomorrow. They're playing Notre Dame Prep at Jimmy John's Field. Well, that'll be interesting. Yeah. Maybe we might have to cool. go down there. It's free. Well, that's even better. You know, know. You know how I like it. I, I like know. it free. You know, I don't like to pay for anything. We just got to buy our concessions. Yeah. You know, well, tomorrow, you said it was? Yeah. What time does that start? Six o'clock. Six o'clock? We'll have to go down there. I know. Taking a trip. That'd be interesting. Uh, yeah. I know the coach of Notre Dame Prep, uh, uh, Gendro, Coach Gendro. Uh, so it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting. Cool. I, I think I'm going to go down there. Yeah. I'm Thanks for well. that. Thanks for that. I know. Thanks for that little thing. That wonderful tidbit. The girls' varsity soccer team most recent matchup was Saturday at Traverse City West, where the girls picked up another victory, winning 2-0. That brings their overall record to 13-3-4. and Yeah, they, we had them on the show, what, a couple of weeks ago? Mm -hmm. A couple, three weeks ago? Yeah. And they, and, they uh, and then I went out and I watched them, and yeah. uh, those girls are watch. very serious. Oh, yeah. Uh, a competition for anybody. Definitely is. And their next matchup is Monday at home against Eisenhower. I believe that's their last regular season matchup, too, before the playoffs start or before, oh, like, Mac Red tournament or something. I'll have to get, uh, I'll get with Coach and see what yeah. uh, see what he's got cooking there. We're going to have a busy day tomorrow. We gotta, we're got we making a trip to everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of driving for us. Um, right. The varsity lacrosse team's most recent game was Friday against Anchor Bay, where the team secured a spot in the regional semifinals, winning 4-2. to two. Oh, that's exciting because, yeah. you know, we – we here on the MIT TV really uh, cover them pretty pretty extensively, and, and it's good to see them do good. Yeah, their next matchup has not yet been set. I believe they're awaiting a match to finish, and then they'll get the winner of that one. I'm not 100% sure what it is, though. And then our feature today, the softball team, their most recent matchup was this weekend at the Skipper Showcase, where they finished 2-1-1 one, and one at that tournament. That brought their overall record to 14, 10, and 0. And their next game is Monday um, against Lake Orion for a doubleheader. 
And, and we hope that they, they peak as well. And the coach talked a little bit about that, and, and uh, even the players talked about it. And, mm-hmm. and, and the key with them is, is hitting. You know, if mm-hmm. they can hit, they can win. Yeah, and those girls seemed pretty motivated. They, they believe that they can hang in there with anyone, which is great. Oh, that, that's always good to have that confidence. Oh, yeah. It's not like my confidence. I don't believe I can hang in with anybody. But <laughs> Oh, gosh. But then we've got the girls' tennis team wrapped up their season on Thursday at the regional championships. The girls secured a total of 17 points, which is just one shy of making states for what would have been the third year in a row. But they finished with an overall record of 10-6. and six. Can we talk about your sister? How'd your sister do? She did pretty good. She she, she got a first round bye, and then she played her second round match one six one six zero. Oh, so she killed it, and then faced her Eisenhower rival there, and just oh, some bit of a tough one. But yeah, it was it was it came down to that final match. Yeah. We were all watching our four singles girl, and we were just like, come on, pull it out, and it. One shy. One shy. One shy. Oh, she was man. pretty upset, but they had a great season. Mm-hmm. It was, I don't think they, nobody would have thought they would have picked up 17 points at the beginning of the season. So with that considered, they had a pretty great season. But I might be making the journey to states though. Oh. Back to Holland. Oh well, we can get your wooden shoes there too. Yeah. And, uh, and wash some I think the tulips are there. And <laughs> tulips are there now. Yeah. Last time yeah. I went, there were no tulips. That was pretty sad. Well, but then I also saw that the girls' track team won regional championships last week. Wow, that must – Cali, they must be pretty fast. Yeah, I think they had 16 between the girls and the boys' team that qualified for states too, which is pretty impressive. Oh, that's good. We'll have to have them on the show as well. Yeah. Recap their season. Yeah. Uh, that'd be great. Well, folks, uh, we want to thank you for joining us for Madison Janivet. I'm Tim Meyer saying thank you for tuning in to the Romeo Sports Recap. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to this episode of the Romeo Sports Recap Show, powered by the MIT TV. Remember, this show is available on both YouTube and Spotify. You can subscribe to the MIT TV YouTube page and click the notification bell to stay up to date on the latest episodes of the Romeo Sports Recap. Or you can find us on Spotify and follow our podcast, Romeo Sports Recap. From the MIT TV, I'm Tim Meyer here with Madison Janabet signing off with a final word from our this sponsors. This podcast is powered by the MIT TV of Romeo, Michigan. If you're looking to start a podcast for your business or personal use, look no further than the MIT TV. They can get you access to equipment, a production engineer, and even edit your podcast. That's all right here at the MIT TV of Romeo. And you can contact them right now via email at mit.tvromeo at gmail.com. That's M-I-T-T dot T-V at gmail.com.